Hi, and welcome to the IIIF and MAPS community session. I'm Stace Maples from the Stanford Geospatial Center and co-chair of the IIIF MAPS group. Before we get started, I'd like to take a few moments to highlight some of the historical milestones that have led up to the IIIF MAPS group and some of the work that we're currently doing. Almost as soon as the internet was born and there were browsers available to browse the web, map libraries were scanning high resolution images of maps and making them available for download online. For the most part, these were just scans made available to download and they were very large for the download speeds of the time. Some of them taking an hour or more to download a single map scan. So when we started my website, uh, Julie Sweetkind Singer and myself in, in 99, we took a lot of heat because our files were too big. Fast forward to 1999 when davidrumsey.com first launched. One of David Rumsey's great innovations was the Luna Image Browser, which allowed very high resolution scans of maps to be made available online through a browser, while also providing with deep zoomable capabilities at performance levels that were unheard of at the time. Another one of David Rumsey's early innovations was to work with Google Maps and the API to lay geo-referenced scan maps on top of Google Maps and make them zoomable within their geographic context. A company called GeoGarage. Together we built the system of using the Mercator projection. It was a little strange. Everything had to be in Mercator uh, because of Google Maps. Um, but we pretty much launched that, I guess, right when Google Maps itself uh, launched. Even using Google Maps mashups with simple dots representing the locations of maps from the David Rumsey map collection at that time was an incredibly innovative use. Fast forward again to 2011, when the New York Public Library established the NYPL Labs. A couple of projects of note came out of the NYPL Labs, not the least of which were the Map Warper, the first web native georeferencing infrastructure for scanned maps. Another early innovation of the NYPL labs was the building inspector, which used a combination of computer vision and human intervention to digitize the building footprints from Sanborn fire insurance maps. It also allowed for quality control, annotations, and other types of augmentation of these scanned maps. Fast forwarding again to 2014 and again at the New York Public Library, moving historic geodata to the web. This was a meeting of a virtual who's who uh, of anyone who was working with maps and spatial data in the gallery, libraries, archives, and museum space. This meeting was basically uh, a meeting to review the state of the art in moving geospatial historical data to web access. Everyone who was there was engaged in trying to figure out how to integrate infrastructure for historic geodata on the web. Some of the projects that came out of or benefited strongly from this meeting included early IIIF, the Open Geo Metadata GitHub community, early efforts at creating Geo Blacklight, and many other sessions focused on bringing historical geodata to scholars across the web. In 2016, we hosted the first geo for live camp at Stanford University. geo for live camp is an annual meeting of GIS librarians and associated technologists who are focused on bringing historical and modern geospatial data to the web. In 2020, at the annual geo for live camp meeting, we held an after camp meeting. This was the first meeting of IIIF and MAPS community. Over the course of the past year, we've been hammering out what it is we wanna do, writing recipes, and creating some prototypes for some of the things we think IIIF should be able to do. You'll get a lot more detail on what we've been up to over the last year in the coming session. So enjoy the rest of the session. Welcome to IIIF Maps. If you're interested in joining us, please check in to uh, joining the community, check the IIIF community calendar and drop in on either our technical sessions or our community group sessions. Thanks.